Hey guys, in today's video I'll be doing another tropical update because man, the Atlantic is still very, very active. We still have Tropical Storm Paulette and Tropical Storm Renee. Paulette has recently really uh, intensified over the past uh, six hours or so. Uh, it's now at 65 miles per hour with a central pressure of 995 millibars moving northwest at 8 miles per hour. It's still moving pretty slowly. Um, but its intensity has gone up a, a decent bit because earlier it was at uh, only like um, 40, 50 miles per hour. So uh, that's uh, that was very fascinating to see. And then Renee is still at 40 miles per hour. Pressure is still at 1,001 millibars, moving quickly west at 16 miles per hour. Now, if we look at Travel Storm Paulette's um, track from the National Hurricane Center, you can see that it is forecast to stay as a tropical storm and then curve more towards um, Bermuda. And then it will likely just go out to sea. Um, I don't see uh, Paulette or Renee at all getting anywhere that close towards the U.S. Um, whatsoever or impacting the U.S. whatsoever. Um, though we do still have to watch for the potential of U the U.S. being impacted by a travel system potentially because there is still a good amount of activity behind Paulette and Renee, um, this system included here, um, that's still over Africa that will emerge into the Atlantic quite soon. Um, here's a look at Tropical Storm Renee's track um, from the National Hurricane Center, and you can see the National Hurricane Center is forecasting Renee to become a hurricane by, oh, uh, maybe middle of the day, Wednesday it seems. Um, or so it looks to become 75 80 mile per hour category one hurricane it seems at the peak and then curving out to sea and weakening um, so again Renee is not going to be really much of a threat, what, a threat whatsoever at all um, and then if I zoom out uh, I'll show you what um, it's looking like for the other two disturbances the one closer towards the east coast and the one over Africa that will emerge into the Atlantic, well, that will emer uh, emerge into the Atlantic um, going into the end of the week into the weekend. So we look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. The one near the east coast has a 40% chance of formation over the next five days, 30% chance of formation within the next uh, two days. And um, it says that... Um, it says that gradual development of the low is possible during the next two or three days, and it could become a tropical depression while it continues to move slowly westward to west-northwestward. Interests along the southeast coast of the U.S. should monitor the progress of this disturbance. So this system does have the potential, as it continues to move towards the northwest, west-northwest, um, to become a, tro a tropical system, uh, whether or not it's just a tropical depression or it does become a become a tropical storm which then it would be named if it became a tropical storm but uh this um this disturbance that's about to come off africa into the um atlantic going towards friday saturday sunday has a much higher likelihood of becoming our next name system our next uh tropical system it says a tropical wave is forecast to emerge off the west coast of africa on thursday gradual development is expected uh, once the system moves over water, and a tropical depression is likely to form um, late this week or over the weekend while the system moves generally westward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. Uh, so again, there's a lot of activity in general um, being monitored in the Atlantic right now. And of course, I mean, you know, it's the peak of the season now. We're in the peak, true peak month of the season, so we kind of expect that. But, I mean, with the way the hurricane season's been going thus far, it's just been crazy now with all this um, activity happening um, and occurring. Um, so let's look, I'll show you what uh, each tropical storm looks like right now on the satellite imagery. First, we'll look at Paulette. And Paulette does have a very, um, a very good look to it for a tropical storm, especially a tro strong tropical storm as it is right now. Um, it has a lot of good, uh, we got to let this load in. There we go. Um, now that it's loaded in, we can finally look at it. You can see it has a good, a really good amount of spin to it, lots of decent convection with it. Um, especially, we got, we got all that good convection as well around the center, and it has good outflow. It looks very, very nice and healthy. Um, though, I do believe there is shear um, that it is going through, so it is kind of pushing the storm off more towards the north and east. But it is heading more in a north, northwest direction. Um, so... Um, in any case, though, the storm is looking very, very good, even with that um, any of any shear that is in place there. Uh, here's a look at Renee. Um, Renee is not looking nearly as good as 
um, Paulette, but it, it does still have enough of a look to it to have it be um, a very weak tropical storm. Yeah, you can see there's like barely any convection with it now. It is looking actually quite terrible. I'm quite surprised that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting it to become a hurricane um, in the next within the next few days or so. Um, so, you know, that's uh, kind of surprising to me. Uh, we'll see if it at all does try and revamp and get a lot more convection and look better. I mean, it does have that kind of outflow to it there and good spin, but that convection is just like there's barely any. And um, I wouldn't be surprised because of that the center is exposed to wherever that center is. Um, it's probably somewhere over here. There might be a very little convection around it, but barely. So it's like barely like anything. Um, Invest 94L is a system close towards the east coast, um, so that's uh, that disturbance that has like a 40% chance of formation within the next five days. Um, so uh, you can see uh, there it is. It's really not much of anything right now. It's still kind of like a tropical wave, just dis very disorganized amounts of showers and storms. Um, so we still got to give it. Uh, the rest of the week into the weekend for it to, um, to potentially like become anything if it decides to or not. Um, now let's go to the current storms and I'll show you what the models are kind of showing for each of for both Paulette and Renee. Here's the um, hurricane model track guidance for Paulette and you can see they all have the all the models have it um, continuing on its like general west direction and then curving um, kind of sharply towards the north and west and most likely generally kind of out to sea and not kind of going anywhere closer towards the U.S. than that and then curve it and after that point once it starts to um, curve more towards in that north and north and west direction it will just curve north and then just really just out to sea. Um, you can see the GEFS model ensemble track guidance also kind of agrees on that um, there and same with the CMC the GEFS para ensemble track model guidance has a much wider spread, but you can see in general it shows it um, kind of curving towards that north, north and west direction and then out to sea. Um, though the intensity guidance does have it, you know, it's a strong travel storm right now, it does have it kind of trying to intensify a bit further and then kind of um, staying steady, maybe weakening, and then maybe some models are even having it strengthen a bit more um, as we head farther out into time and towards the around 60 hours out from now towards, um, towards 84 to 108 hours out from now. A couple models have it getting towards Category 2 status. I mean, I don't know. We'll see um, what it does. Paulette does seem to be kind of the more dominant system, as you saw with the just um, with showing you the satellite imagery for both systems. But, uh, you know, Renee does have that potential. It does seem, according to some models. You can see all the models, generally, all the Hurricane Track model guns, all, have, all of them have it curving out to sea and just not doing much of anything. You can see the GFS uh, model track guidance also has that same thing, just curving out to sea, not to be much of a threat. Same with the GFS para model track guidance. So again, it's, Renee's not going to be much of anything, though this is fascinating as hell. Um, this is the 18Z run of the model intensity guidance for Renee. Majority of the models are in very good agreement that it will kind of try and slowly imp intensify from here and maybe become a category one hurricane and then one has it getting towards strong category two barely category three and then the cody model just has it shooting up all of a sudden as we head towards 84 hours out and become a category five highly doubt that will happen now we haven't had our cat first category five hurricane or any category five hurricanes yet this season for that matter um, but i don't think renee will be that system i think we still have to wait a bit but uh, i do think uh, pretty shortly we at least within the next um, one to three weeks, we will see most likely more towards that three weeks out from now. It will, uh, we will, um, get our first category five hurricane of the season. Um, and I mean, any, in any case, we'll be heading into the Greek alphabet. So it'll be very interesting to see what, um, those like first Greek alphabet names will be doing, um, how strong they will get, um, in that aspect. Now, um, Let's look at what the models are showing, uh, what the GFS is showing first off for the tropics in the Atlantic. If I zoom in here, um, here we go. We have both, there's Paulette and Renee. We have both systems, you know, kind of just heading out to sea. Renee doesn't become much of anything, kind of just goes out to sea. Paulette falls apart. Then there's... Okay, this is fascinating. There, then there's that um, there's that wave that comes off that a wave that has a high chance of development right now um, comes off Africa into the Atlantic by the time we get to Saturday, and then as you can see, um, and then it kind of uh, goes.
goes out to sea, it, it is, uh, would be, like, potentially Sally or whatever. But then there's, like, some other precipitation off that, like, cuts, like, uh, branches off of that wave and becomes its own thing and becomes its own system and goes much farther south into the Caribbean, becomes fairly strong, and then goes into, oh, we gotta let this load in, goes into the Gulf, and there you can see, let me zoom this in more so you can see that um, a bit better. And that becomes fairly strong and then crosses into Florida and Georgia and more towards just off, kind of just near the coast or off the coast of the southeast um, U.S. coastline. Um, so the GFS in general has a lot of activity kind of happening. I mean, there's that um, low to maybe slightly medium chance of development area that's being monitored. But that doesn't become much of anything. But uh, in any case, the GFS has Paulette and Renee and then that high chance um uh, wave coming off of Africa, becoming one, and then maybe a second tropical system branches off of that, going farther south into the Caribbean and the Gulf. Um, so that's going to be something really we're going to have to watch, um, especially if the GFS kind of um, continues to show that and um, continues to be consistent showing that. Um, that could be quite concerning going into next week and the week after um, having a bunch of those systems coming off of Africa and potentially maybe some strong systems. Uh, let's see what the European is showing. There's Paulette and Renee there. They both go off and dissipate, and then that African wave comes off into the Atlantic. And we get, um, we get, uh, there's that one um, area of vorticity for that one disturbance, and then there's that other vorticity um, there for that other disturbance as well for from both of those ways really um, there's that one and then like kind of part of the system kind of uh, waits a little longer and then develops into its own system so the European is also showing multiple systems heading forward um, not um, kind of including Paulette and Renee but uh, kind of showing another potential two systems or just like the GFS is showing now let's look at the CMC model. We'll go to the MSLP and precip so I can show you the precipitation for it. And the CMC is showing there's Paulette and Renee. And uh, as we head farther out in time, it show, uh, the CMC shows um, Paulette and Renee dissipating. And then there's that um, other disturbance, that Africa disturbance that will come off Africa into the Atlantic and will become potentially Sally. Um, it's not showing anything, by the way with uh, that disturbance near the East Coast, um, just real quick on that. So there's um, the, um, what would become Sally, um, and it shows it becoming very strong. And then, well, actually the CMC is kind of hinting at maybe some like precipitation, getting a closed low pressure center far off the East Coast, and maybe becoming another kind of tropical system or something. And then there's like these other two areas of low pressure um, in the MDR, which maybe could also be a hint of uh, tropical activity for the CMC. So the CMC also is just, in general, just recapping, it's also showing lots of tropical activity forthcoming after Paulette and Renee. So um, that is definitely something we're going to have to watch very, very closely. Now, um, I'm going to show you what the kind of, why this is kind of happening in like the MJO phase for it, for what's going on with the MJO phase. The MJ, MJO phase, MJO stands for the Madden-Julian oscillation, and when the MJ, that MJO phase is in, um, is in the greens, you see the greens, that's a rising phase of the MJO, which makes it more conducive and favorable for tropical development in the Atlantic. So you can see this um, kind of south-central and MDR regions of the Atlantic near Africa, it's in a um, rising MJO phase for conducive de development, that's why um, Paulette and Renee were able to form, and that's why we have that, those other um, high chance of development areas. You can see that um, rising air, rising MJO phase kind of sticks around all the way through um, September twenty, uh, September twenty second, and then we kind of go back into a neutral and then fully sinking air phase um, as we head towards the end of September and into October, um, and then as we head getting towards the middle and the latter part of October, we go as we start to recede with the with the sinking air phase. And go back into a neutral phase, and then potentially the rising phase of the MGO, MJO again starts to come back towards um, the Eastern Pacific and into the Atlantic. So there is that potential. I mean, it's very far out, but there's that potential that um, you know maybe October could be also a maybe a decently busy month. But uh, of course, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I mean, the hurricane season in general has already again been very active already, 
and it just seems to be continuing in general, so to be very active and get a lot more name storms happening. All right, so finally we're getting to the 2020 Atlantic Hurricane Season Wikipedia page. We've had a total of 18 depressions, total of 17 storms, five hurricanes total, and one major hurricane total. Total um, deaths is at 115, and total damage so far this season is at somewhere a little above $14.67 billion in damage. And again, we've already gone through all the way through the R name, which um, is the 17th name on the list, 17th letter on the list. And you can see with Paulette and Renee, if I zoom this out, um, you can see there's this table of um, all of the name storms this year that have become the record earliest formed name storm by storm number, um, beating a lot of the um, those same named letter named uh, storms in, from 2005. So like for instance, um, Kyle earlier this year in mid-August beat Katrina from 2005, which formed August 24th. So Kyle beat Katrina's formation by 10 days. Renee beat Rita's formation from 2005 by 11 days. Paulette beat Philippe's formation by 10 days. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we, uh, I mean, 2020 in general, if we're just looking at, you know, the name storms, the storms uh, forming and being named, um, it's be, it, the, the season is forming name storms quicker than in 2005, slightly quicker than 2005, which is very fascinating. Now, of course, we've had in general much weaker systems to this point than 2005 has had. We've only had one major hurricane. Um, and that uh, helped in kind of to boost the ACE value, which is accumulated cyclone energy, um, to now we're at 43.3825 units. Um, so, you know, and at this point, the 2005 hurricane season in the Atlantic had much, much higher ACE, obviously, because, for instance, um, just, you know, in July, we've had both major hurricanes, Dennis and Emily. Dennis was a Category 4, Emily was a Cat 5, and then by this point, we've already had, like, Katrina, um, so that was another Category 5, so that boosted the ACE up a lot as well. Um, but in any case, we've already had 18 total systems, including that Tropical Depression 10 that didn't become a named system, but we've already gone through Renee. The next name on the list is Sally, which we'll likely see be named heading towards later this, towards the end of this week into this weekend into early next week. We'll see Sally, and then there's the potential to see maybe Teddy, Vicky, and Wilfred um, as we head into um, the entirety of next week and into the following week. I do expect that we will enter the Greek alphabet between September 20th and 25th, which would obviously be way ahead of when 2005 entered the Greek alphabet. So I do think we do have a way better of a chance now to potentially beat 2005 in terms of total name storms, which would be nuts, truly insane. Now, um, in terms of, uh, you know, having the, for this year's amount of total hurricanes, total major hurricanes, I think we'll definitely be go, um, come pr uh, a good bit short of, the record amount uh, 2005 produced. 2005 produced a record amount of 15 hurricanes, record amount of seven major hurricanes. Um, since we've only had one major hurricane, I have no idea how many more major hurricanes we'll have. Um, we'll probably only get like a bit further to that point of seven major hurricanes and 15 major hurricanes, but uh, I don't think we'll get to that point. I think we'll still come pretty short. But um, in general, still, the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is definitely one for the record books. It's been the most active Atlantic hurricane season definitely since 2005. And is even, in terms of named storms, being a lot quicker and forming a lot more named storms in um, a lot quicker amount of time than 2005. So uh, it's, just, it's just nuts to watch and um, see unfold. But uh, in any case, that's uh, today's video, guys. Really hope you enjoyed. If you found this informative or helpful, um, please uh, please remember to, or if you want to, just like, comment. If you're a first-time viewer and you liked what you saw in today's video, please consider subscribing. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.